Get ready for a significant shift in the automotive landscape as Toyota unveils its groundbreaking new engine, poised to render electric vehicles obsolete. This innovative engine, touted as the most environmentally friendly option to date, marks a paradigm shift in the automotive industry. Toyota's latest endeavor focuses on a water-powered engine, a concept akin to their fuel cell electric vehicles like the Toyota Mirai and hydrogen-powered internal combustion engines. Water engines have long been an ambition within the automotive sector due to their potential advantages over conventional engines and EVs. Despite numerous attempts to make water-powered engines feasible for everyday use, previous efforts have fallen short. However, Toyota's entry into this arena promises a different outcome. Unlike past endeavors undertaken with limited resources, Toyota's well-funded initiative allows for thorough testing under various conditions. So how does this water engine work? Essentially, it operates similarly to a hydrogen generator, but with key improvements tailored for vehicular applications. Comparable to Toyota's hydrogen combustion engines, such as those found in the Yaris GRH2, the water engine undergoes a chemical reaction to separate hydrogen from oxygen, eliminating the need for pre-processed hydrogen. The engine essentially utilizes electrolysis to split H2O molecules, separating hydrogen and oxygen. High voltages from electrodes in the water tank trigger this separation. Unlike fuel cell electric vehicles and hydrogen combustion engines, which require heavy and armored tanks to contain pure hydrogen, the hydrogen in water eliminates this need. When it comes to power Powering the vehicle, the process aligns with hydrogen combustion engines. The separated hydrogen is directed to the engine where it combusts, akin to compressed natural gas. The engine's operation resembles that of CNG-powered engines, necessitating adjustments to fuel injectors and reinforcing components like cylinder heads, pistons, and valves due to hydrogen's combustibility. In terms of long-term environmental benefits, the water engine offers nearly zero emissions, akin to EVs. Yet, it boasts greater convenience, requiring only diluted water for refueling. This convenience surpasses other engine types, making it an attractive option. Additionally, widespread adoption could reduce the need for oil extraction, further benefiting the environment. In heavy machinery and large power units, fossil fuels might remain the primary option. However, with water engines, there's no necessity for extracting rare metals from the earth, a process notorious for its environmental impact, polluting both water sources and surrounding soil, rendering areas uninhabitable. Comparing water engines to hydrogen combustion engines and FCEVs touted as zero emission solutions highlights their superiority. Water storage requires minimal effort, unlike hydrogen, which demands precise conditions and substantial investment. Hydrogen, being a volatile gas, poses challenges in containment, necessitating armored tanks and rigorous maintenance. In contrast, water-powered vehicles can utilize common plastic containers for storage. Storing hydrogen externally presents further challenges, requiring specific temperature conditions and sturdy infrastructure adding to costs. In contrast, distilled water is readily available in supermarkets or can be produced at home with basic chemistry knowledge. Moreover, acquiring pure hydrogen is costly and compounded by storage issues, hindering its widespread adoption. The production and storage of hydrogen incur significant costs, driving up the overall expense for consumers. This raises the question, why opt for hydrogen cars when they're pricier to purchase and operate compared to EVs and traditional fossil fuel vehicles? Despite their environmental friendliness and logistical simplicity, the practicality of water engines for daily use is a valid concern. However, water engines prove to be highly usable in everyday scenarios. Contrary to misconceptions, they offer comparable performance to gasoline engines and have the potential to surpass them in power output, generating up to three times more energy in theory. Moreover, they boast superior safety features, eliminating the risk associated with highly combustible fuels. Their simple mechanical design makes water engines easy to produce and cost-effective. They outshine both EVs and FCEVs in terms of affordability and simplicity, making them an attractive option, especially for developing countries lacking in oil resources. Notably, an Iranian scientist successfully converted his Peugeot 405 to run on water, demonstrating the viability of this technology. Aladin Kasemi, a scientist, achieved a remarkable feat by converting his old car into a fully functional water-powered vehicle,
showcasing the potential of this technology. While his DIY project demonstrates what can be achieved with limited resources, one can only imagine the advancements Toyota could make with adequate funding. Beyond their ease of production, water-powered engines offer exceptional fuel efficiency, surpassing both gasoline and electric vehicles. Kasemi's modified 405 achieves an impressive 30 to 40 miles per gallon of water, far exceeding the performance of its original petrol engine. This suggests that future water-powered engines could achieve even greater mileage, making them more cost-effective to run. However, Despite the promise of water engines, their widespread adoption faces several hurdles. While the infrastructure requirements are minimal, the technology itself remains experimental. Many early prototypes have been unreliable, raising questions about their practicality for daily use. As such, while water engines hold potential as a future vehicle technology, their viability hinges on overcoming these challenges. Moreover, while using water as a fuel appears promising, safety concerns arise due to the separation of water into hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen, notorious for its difficulty in containment, poses significant risks if leaked potentially leading to dangerous and even fatal consequences. Even if Toyota were to develop a reliable and secure water-powered vehicle, there's speculation about potential backlash from lithium mining, battery, and oil companies. Adopting water as a fuel source could significantly reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and diminish the need for mining rare elements like cobalt, and lithium. This shift could disrupt some of the world's most lucrative companies, such as Rio Tinto, prompting them to oppose further development of water engines. In fact, rumors suggest that similar opposition occurred 25 years ago when Stanley Allen Meyer invented the first fully functional water-powered car. Meyer reportedly faced constant threats and offers to suppress his invention allegedly from representatives of oil companies. Tragically, Meyer's sudden death under suspicious circumstances only added to the controversy. While official records attribute his passing to a brain aneurysm, doubts linger, fueled by the mysterious disappearance of his car and engine plans shortly after his death. Given this history, it's uncertain whether Toyota will proceed with developing a water-powered engine, especially considering the potential secrecy surrounding such endeavors. As of now, there are no official confirmations regarding Toyota's involvement in such a project, leaving the future of water engines shrouded in uncertainty. At Toyota, where the focus has predominantly been on hybrids rather than fully electric vehicles, Chairman Akio Toyota frankly told reporters that people are finally seeing reality. Even some EV owners now express a desire for gas-powered cars or a water-powered engine. But what's behind this trend? Let's dig into the burning issue. Numerous studies have indicated that EVs don't pose a greater fire risk than traditional gasoline-powered cars. However, the real challenge lies in effectively tackling an EV fire as conventional firefighting methods often prove inadequate. While it's clear that the overall risk of EV fires isn't higher, the crux of the matter lies in the difficulty of extinguishing such fires. Traditional firefighting techniques, which typically work well with conventional vehicles, fall short when dealing with EVs. Unlike combustion engine cars, where depriving the fire of oxygen is a primary firefighting strategy, EVs have built-in oxygen sources within their batteries, making this approach ineffective. The CEO of Honda recently made a surprising announcement, declaring the immediate closure of their entire electric vehicle division. This decision has left many in the automotive industry bewildered. The reason behind this bold move? CEO Toshiba holds a staunch opposition to EVs, believing that the current state of internal combustion engines still has a long road ahead. He argues against the push for costly EVs on the middle class, urging political leaders to exercise caution. In an unexpected twist, other major automakers like Ford and GM have followed suit, halting their electric vehicle production as well. This collective action raises concerns about the potential collapse of the entire EV sector. What motivates the Honda CEO to halt EV production? Could there be a hidden agenda favoring combustion engines? Honda's stance against electrification stems from its reluctance to endorse expensive EVs with limited range. Instead, they are directing their efforts toward developing a revolutionary EV alternative, which could either catapult the 
company to success or disrupt the entire EV market. So what exactly unfolded? Honda scrapped a whopping $5 billion plan dedicated to EV production, sending shockwaves through investors. Their collaboration with GM, aimed at creating affordable electric vehicles, was abandoned approximately 18 months after its public announcement. Initially, the plan involved leveraging GM's Ultium battery technology to manufacture EVs priced below $30,000. However, several market challenges, including escalating costs, inadequate infrastructure, and sluggish consumer demand influenced this decision. Why did Honda withdraw from the partnership? The CEO's skepticism revolves around the practicality of EVs in the American market, given the current state of charging infrastructure and the premium pricing strategy adopted by automakers across the board. Another significant concern revolves around the low demand and considerable consumer backlash towards EVs. Companies such as Ford and GM mistakenly assumed that people would blindly purchase anything labeled as electric, even at exorbitant prices. However, reality proved otherwise. Despite the termination of this specific EV initiative, it's crucial to note that other collaborations between GM and Honda remain unaffected. For example, GM is gearing up to produce the 2024 Honda Prologue EV, slated to debut in the coming months. This decision also serves the interests of GM, a company facing considerable challenges under the leadership of CEO Mary Barra. GM recently incurred a hefty fine of over $100 million for producing substandard vehicles vehicles that posed risks to consumers. Additionally, ongoing worker strikes by the United States auto workers have been costing the company a staggering $200 million per week. Honda, renowned for its reputation of delivering reliable quality, understandably hesitates to rush into electrification and risk tarnishing its image. It's noteworthy that Honda is not alone in recalibrating its EV strategy. Even Ford and its partner GM have made recent adjustments to their EV agendas. GM, traditionally a powerhouse in the automotive industry, has opted to scale back its EV production in North America due to lower than expected demand. This strategic shift is projected to save the automaker a significant $1.5 billion in 2024. Initially, GM had ambitious plans to sell 400,000 EVs in North America from 2022 until mid-2024, with an additional target of producing 100,000 EVs in the latter half of 2023 alone. However, production delays are now anticipated for new models like the Equinox EV, Silverado EV and GMC Sierra EV. GM, in collaboration with Honda, is gearing up to introduce another vehicle boasting a range of over 500 miles, providing stiff competition for EVs. However, more details on this development will be shared shortly. Recent announcements have shed light on GM's decision to postpone the production of electric trucks near Detroit. This adjustment aims to ensure better capital management in response to what GM perceives as lower demand for electric trucks. Despite this delay, GM has allocated a substantial substantial $35 billion towards its electrification plans until 2025, with the overarching goal of achieving full electrification by 2035. Nevertheless, their commitment faces challenges due to labor strikes, resulting in an $800 million reduction in pre-tax earnings this year alone, with an additional anticipated weekly loss of $200 million. Similarly, Ford is proceeding cautiously with its EV strategy. The company recently revealed a delay in its ambitious $12 billion spending plan dedicated to EV manufacturing capacity. Ford's primary concerns revolve around the high costs associated with electric vehicles and the noticeable slowdown in demand. As part of this cautious approach, Ford has halted the construction of a new battery factory in Kentucky and abandoned the target of producing 2 million EVs by 2026. In a world rapidly transitioning towards electrification, Honda's CEO, Toshihiro Maib, has made a bold statement signaling a divergence in Honda's approach to achieving carbon neutrality. MIB, in a recent clarification, outlined Honda's objective, which is to achieve carbon neutrality rather than focusing solely on building EVs. This stance marks a notable departure from the prevailing sentiment in the automotive industry. While many governments and corporations are aggressively promoting EV adoption, Honda's CEO suggests that this unilateral approach may be flawed. MIBA highlighted concerns about the rush towards electrification, citing inadequacies in charging infrastructure that could hinder customer satisfaction. With over three decades dedicated to 
engine development, Maib acknowledged his personal bias, admitting to feeling somewhat threatened by the shift. However, he emphasized that Honda isn't opposed to EVs, but advocates for a diversified approach to meet customer needs. What's particularly intriguing is Honda's significant strides in developing alternative fuels, which they believe could rival EVs. They have seen promising sales of their combustion vehicles, showing a 32% year-over-year improvement. Additionally, their hybrids are being touted as a more efficient alternative to reducing CO2 emissions. Despite previously dismissing hydrogen fuels due to technological challenges, Honda has made substantial investments in this area, now claiming to have overcome these obstacles and potentially offering another viable alternative to traditional EVs. Insider reports suggest that Honda is in the process of developing an engine prototype designed to be integrated with internal combustion vehicles. This innovative engine could potentially reduce emissions by up to 90%. Additionally, Honda has plans to introduce several new fuel cell electric vehicles in 2024, which I'll delve into later in this discussion. However, there's another significant reason why Honda's CEO is skeptical about an all-electric future. Despite claims of zero tailpipe emissions, there's a darker side to EVs that often goes unnoticed. The production of EV batteries requires significant amounts of lithium, cobalt and nickel, which results in a carbon footprint 60% higher than that of traditional petrol cars. Moreover, the mining of these minerals, particularly in regions like Congo, imposes dangerous conditions on vulnerable communities. Honda's overarching strategy has always been to offer affordable mobility solutions. They acknowledge the inflated costs associated with EVs, with even budget options often exceeding the $40,000 mark globally. Honda adapts its approach based on regional dynamics. For instance, Europe and California are moving towards banning combustion vehicles, while China's generous incentives are shaping Honda's plan to launch 10 electric models by 2028. Addressing technological advancements, Honda, traditionally perceived as lagging behind, has embarked on strategic partnerships. One notable collaboration is with Sony, leading to the establishment of Sony Honda Mobility Inc. This software-focused mobility tech company aims to introduce a new EV in the US and Japan by 2026, integrating Level 3 automated driving technology and exploring the potential of the metaverse to enhance driving experiences. Furthermore, Honda is revitalizing its sports car lineup with the hybrid electric prelude concept, a departure from the anticipated all-electric model. This iconic name in Honda's history features a gas electric drivetrain, raising questions about Honda's future EV strategies. Additionally, Honda is venturing into fuel cell electric vehicles, set to commence production in 2024. The new FCEV will be based on the acclaimed Honda CRV model, reflecting Honda's commitment to transitioning to 100% BEVs or FCEVs by 2040, demonstrating its dedication to a sustainable automotive future. It's evident that Honda isn't alone in its cautious approach to EVs, with industry giants like Ford and GM also expressing reservations. This collective stance highlights the potential challenges posed by full electrification. While it may appear that Honda is taking a step back from the future, recent developments suggest otherwise. Innovations hint at potential engines capable of reducing emissions by a remarkable 90%. Additionally, the brand isn't completely disregarding the EV market. Partnerships, such as the one with Sony for the development of a new EV, are still in progress. However, the significant question remains. Is Honda's divergence a bold move or a monumental misjudgment? In a world increasingly embracing electrification, with companies like Tesla leading the charge, Honda's departure from this path is noteworthy. Undoubtedly, EVs come with their environmental challenges, particularly concerning battery production. Honda's commitment to offering affordable mobility solutions and its approach to carbon neutrality without relying solely on EVs present an intriguing pivot. Will Honda's alternative route become the blue blueprint for the future, or will it be overshadowed by EV powerhouses like Tesla? Share your thoughts in the comments below. On another note, I've recently uploaded a video discussing groundbreaking news that could impact the entire EV industry. If you're interested in being truly shocked by what's about to unfold with EVs, be sure to check it out.